All right. So good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Thank you. Um, so I'm here today, and you all know me, uh, Maxine Pryor for the recording, um, chapter president for Comto Colorado, and also the uh, co-chair for the National Intern Program. And I am wearing a different hat today. So the Maxine you saw and knew yesterday and the jeans cutting up. We're going to push pause on that one. Uh, going forward, um, what you're going to see is a transition, I think, not only from myself, but the entire team into um, get it done mode. And so today, we're here to uh, talk about making a great impression. Um, I see some of you are here from last year or previous years, and you've got the memo. So that's a good thing. Those of you who are new, you're going to get the memo. So um, thank you all for those of you who got up and changed your seats. I want to give you a fresh perspective on things today. And sometimes being able to move a seat is just a manifestation of those kind of things happening um, with a mental shift. So that being said, we're going to talk about dress right dress today. I accidentally was pushing the pointer. How about that? So executive presence, anybody know what that means? How about somebody read it? Malik. A little eager. So it's the culmination of leadership qualities, communication skills, engagement, expertise, and personal image. Somebody tell me what you think that means. And don't everybody answer at once. Yes. Look the part. What else? That would address personal image. Be the part. What do you mean by be the part? <laughs> that was actually a good, um, good answer, though. You want to elaborate? Whatever you think it might be. All right, we, we'll come back to you. We got a live answer. Mama do. Act as a leader. Okay, Liddy. It's just kind of like embodying everything that's professional. That's exactly it. Yes. So when you said B, that's where I was hoping you would go to. But that's okay. She got your back. She got your back. So it's, it's being. It's the things that you say, the way that you look, the things that you do, the way that you show up, how you present yourself. So why is this important? Because all of you are getting ready to transition into your professional careers, and it's critically important that you understand who you are and what you're bringing to the table. And when you have a clear understanding of that, that helps your, your value to be driven up. So we're going to help you with some of that today. <coughs> Corporate culture. Companies have different types of corporate culture. You've got um, some companies where, um, somebody describe Google for me. What do you think their corporate culture is? It's extremely laid back. Are you wearing your t-shirt? Good. Sandals, laid back. It's like a friendly environment. Friendly. Okay, engaging. Um, what about, let's say we've got a couple people in here from AECOM. Is AECOM similar to Google? Not at all. Not at all? <laughs> How is it different? Any AECOM people in the room? No? Okay. Okay. Uh, How is the, the, the culture different? Yeah, the dress code, you have to dress like professional. Mm -hmm. That's usually on a Friday? Yeah, on a Friday. Okay. Um, so that's a good thing. Having an awareness of what your culture is that you're going into is going to be very helpful because that's going to help you gauge what your wardrobe needs are going to be. Um, knowing when and how to assimilate. A lot of millennials tend to want to come into an organization just as they are, kind of like church. You know how they say, just come as you are? Um, sometimes, depending on the corporate culture, not so much. There's a level of conforming that needs to take place. And so we're going to talk about what some of those things look like. 
Trends versus classics. Again, depending on the culture, the environment that you find yourself working in and uh, sometimes playing in, um, trends are okay and it's great for outside of work or great for the days where they do allow you know, jeans and so on to be worn. Uh, but even then, we want to make sure that it's within certain boundaries and parameters. Why is this important? This is important for you all, especially because you're just beginning your careers. You're just starting off in your, um, with your professional development. And so it's very key right now for you all to establish your reputation. And a lot of times when you have millennials coming into an organization, and I'm sure we'll hear more about this tomorrow at their workshop, um, sometimes they're not taken as seriously as they could and they should. We don't want that for you all. We want to make sure that you all are prepared, that you're taken seriously, that you look the part, you dress the part. Um, I think it was Anne who may have said yesterday, which is something I say at all of the workshops, you know, don't dress, for, don't dress for where you are, but dress for where you're going. And sometimes that's going to take you a moment to sit down and even decide where you want to go. Because some of y'all are like, I just want to go through the line to get my diploma and leave school. That's like as far as you can see right now. But if you can take a moment and see yourself as, uh, who in here told me yesterday they wanted to be a consultant and own their own business? Was that you? Was, she do was that you? Okay, so if you're, th and you, t yeah, you're right, my bad. How could I leave you out, right? Uh, so for those of you who see yourselves as entrepreneurs, you know, knowing what that's going to take, knowing what that's going to look like right now, like you want to set that up right now. I, uh, when I was in, um, high school going into college my mom tells me that I had like this thing for suits so I would wear suits all the time and uh, even in my professional career now and I am also an entrepreneur I'm a small I'm a business owner I own a um, diversity and inclusion consulting firm and I have to show up every day like a boss like for real <laughs> So I have to show up like a boss. Why is that? Because I've got current clients, I've got potential clients, I've got folks who don't know what I do, a lot of folks who inquire about what I do simply because of how I'm dressed. What do you do? Like, you know, okay, I see you. What do you do? It's funny how our clothes either draw or repel people. I did that backwards, didn't I? How, I, how people, we draw them or how we repel them um, simply by, you know, the gear that we have on. So want to make sure that, again, that you all are prepared. And I, I chose that image of change because sometimes um, you got to take small steps to get up to that window of opportunity and it's going to require some incremental change. Sometimes a change will be more drastic. Sometimes it's just the little things that take us there. Uh, interview intel. It, who knows what I mean by this? Who has an idea? I'm going to let one of the previous interns answer that. Interview intel. Paying attention is also necessary. <laughs> so if you don't have your, please put your phones away, whatever. I'm sure they told you all that housekeeping stuff. Malik. That's exactly right. Doing, in t doing research on the organization before you join them. And in this particular context, how do you think that's done when it comes to image? Y'all look nervous, like I'm about to call on you. Knowing what their dress code is. Knowing what their dress code is. Uh-huh. But how can I find those things out? <laughs> okay, wait, glassdoor.com, Google, and what else? What kind of research? Research. research. You said <laughs> speak with somebody who works there. Um, I challenge you all to take it one step further. And if that location is close to you, I call it the, uh, the sit-in pass-through. So what that looks like is you can go to a particular facility um, and they will have a waiting room and you can just go and take a seat, grab one of the magazines, go around lunchtime especially and uh, pretend like you're waiting for somebody for an interview, right? No, seriously. And pay attention to the people who walk through. Pay attention to what they're wearing. 
If you want to be dressed well and stand out for the right reasons when you get to your interview, you want to make sure you look like the space, the folks in the space that you're going to be um, collaborating with. Of course, you kind of want to look better than them if you want to stand out and make an impression too. IBM old school versus Google and the millennials. There was a time where corporations really did want us to look like that, for everybody to look the same. Dark suit, dark tie, white shirt, that was all. Without the tie for the ladies, but dark suit, white shirt, and that was it. We moved on from there, and uh, now we've gone to like this extremely casual look. We talked about Google earlier, I mentioned them, and I had just had to put a picture in there because they look like they're coming from school or at school working on some kind of project. Um, and, and for the picture up in the, f oh, I got a pointer, that's right, hey. Um, so <laughs> for this group right here, somebody describe them in one word. Huh? Chill? Okay. Comfortable? Cash? Come on, if this was a meme, what would y'all say? Or a gif or whatever. It's not a good meme? <laughs> you know what, you're fired. Uh, so that's not necessarily the look we want either, right? Google, how many of you are going to work for Google right now, immediately? No? Okay, so we can take that off the table. And then last but not least, there seems to be in some environments the continuation of that same assimilation type of attire. Anyone going to work at the White House? Hopefully, okay. This is, well, let me go back. That's what you can expect. For the, for, for the gentlemen, anyway, if you look at some of the commentaries in the news for the ladies, they have really, um, you have Hillary to thank for that, uh, wearing some more colorful outfits, uh, sheath dresses and that sort of thing. And a sheath dress, for those of you ladies who don't know, that's just a, a, a silhouette type of dress, not necessarily something that is form-fitting, because we're gonna talk about that in a minute, too. Um, <laughs> So this is where, this is the happy medium. This is where we're looking to have you guys. A place where you're still happy, you're still yourself, but at the same time, you're, um, you're identified as, as respectable and pro professional, if I can get that word out, and professional. So what's the difference? You have several different types of work attire. You've got business formal, which we advise you guys you will be in tomorrow. You've got uh, smart attire, you've got business casual, and you guys fall, today, some of you fall uh, in one of those two categories, and then casual. Darn it, I'm gonna get these buttons right. So the dress code for ladies. As you can see, <clears throat> business formal usually is a, is a suit. Uh, business casual would be kind of a step down, maybe uh, something without a jacket. Like the jacket makes the difference for both of you, male and female. A jacket makes the difference. It really turns up your outfit. It transitions your outfit from uh, something casual or uh, business casual to something much more uh, well-received in the world that we operate in. Uh, business casual usually happens to be a, a cardigan tw twin set, which I know y'all ain't wearing no cardigans necessarily, but even just a dress shirt, button down shirt. Smart casual is where you'd probably throw a jacket over some jeans, a cute top and some jeans. And then casual, of course, I don't even need a definition for that. Again, some, some places of work will allow you to, to show up like that. For the gentlemen, what does that look like? Business formal, you're bringing it. You're bringing it. You'll, you'll definitely see some, some gentlemen turned all the way up like this tomorrow. Uh, again, business, business casual, some of you fall in that, that uh, definition today. I tried to call you, but my phone's being ridiculous. I'm just checking on y'all, you good? Yeah, we're good. All right, somebody's going to find where that's coming from. 
but you can let them know that we're good for sure. Um, So brand awareness, uh, what's, let's have somebody read what the definition of a brand is. And someone I haven't heard from yet before I volunteer. Oh, good. Stand up for me. A brand is a name, term, design, symbol, or other feature that distinguishes an organization or product from its rivals in the eyes of the customer. So before you sit down, for your personal brand, what is something that distinguishes you from the next person? It's a good one, huh? Yeah? OK, I'm going to come back to you. Think about that. Uh, I know Khalil has an answer. What distinguishes you from the next person and makes you the standout? What makes you the right candidate? Don't be shy now. <laughs> And what does me consist of? Uh, unique. But I mean, everybody would say that. I'm unique, too. What makes your unique different from mine unique? <laughs> Mama do. OK. Anybody else over here? Thank you, Diamond. Like, yes. For me, I guess, like, as far as professional brand, like, I guess what makes me stand out a little bit is that I'm not, you know, just interested in trying to promote or help myself. I try to help others as well. So okay. I guess that would help me. That's good, helping others. Anybody else? So if somebody in this room were to describe you, what word would they use? Huh? Hard working. Hard working. OK. Any other adjectives? Organize, good. Huh? Committed. Committed. Decide. Come on, Chloe, I know you got something. Discipline. Disciplined. Come on, Griff. I like, I like Willing discipline. To learn. Willing to learn. Okay. These are good. Some of the things that, um, that I've been branded have been professional, like consummate professional. Um, several times from a couple bosses, I've heard that I exhibit grace under fire, um, organized, uh, team player those kind of things. Those are the kind of words that you want to have associated with your brand. And if not necessarily those terms, because you may not be an extrovert, you may not be a great team player, but that's fine. Maybe you are um, very detail oriented and your kind of work leads you to more analytical, you know, research and that sort of thing where you're alone often. So whatever it is that you are um, looking to portray as your brand, be, be very cognizant of and, and this is a good thing, even for you, Khalil, to be able to, I know I'm not gonna pick on you the whole time, uh, that you guys take a moment and think about what you do want your brand to be. And I'm gonna do a timeout here really quickly because I know at the beginning of the engagement with you all um, on yesterday, we mentioned how important it is to have pen and paper out and be taking notes. And I know I'm not just sharing this information for my health, because I really need you guys to have some takeaways when we're all done with this, all right? So, uh, a brand is a name, term, design, symbol, or other feature that distinguishes an organization or product or person even from its rivals in the eyes of the customer. Okay, who am I? Just do it. Um, gosh, it's not on here. If I were to say it's mm mm good. Campbell's soup, <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> built blank tough. Ford. I should have known my car girl was going to get that one. That's great. Um, mm. We bring good things to life. Who said it over here? <laughs> GE, we bring good things to life. Can anyone think of anything else? Just do it. Just do it. We did that one. The real thing. Who's the real thing? 
Coca Cola, I heard it. You said what? Coca Cola, okay. How do you all know? There you go. How do you all know what brand I'm talking about just by saying a few words? Because what? It's their slogan. It's the thing that they say. It's the thing that they're known for. Wanted to bring that one to your attention because I want you all to start paying attention to how you sound because that's part of your brand. Are you a pessimist? Are you an optimist? Y'all know what that means, right? Do you have a positive perspective on life? Do you have a negative perspective on, on life? Um, when you open your mouth, do people say, oh my God, does she have to complain one more time? Or does someone say, dang, he's so full of himself. That's all he talks about. Like what are the things that are coming out of your mouth that are contributing to your brand? Take note of those things. Oh, and before I forget, two things I, wanna, I want to um, leave with you all and make sure that you jot down. We've been listening to some of you talk as you're doing your different presentations or answering different questions. And I would highly recommend that as you start your professional careers, that you all consider a, um, an organization such as Toastmasters to assist with your public speaking. They say most people, more people are afraid of speaking publicly than they are of death. Can you believe that? Does, uh, does anybody in this, in this room feel that way? Really, Brandy? As good as a public, of a public speaker as she is. But it's funny, it's, and that's a dichotomy also, because you do have some people who will get up on a mic and are nervous. I remember when I first started doing this, I was like this. The mic was literally in my hand to, like this, because I was so nervous about talking in front of people. We want to make sure that you all are in position so that when you get in front of your committee members, your board members, your peers, when you're doing your different presentations, when you're selling yourself in, a, in an interview process, that you are articulate, that you are confident, that you are mindful of the time frame that you've been given. And these are all the things that being a part of an organization can, uh, like, to like Toastmasters can teach you. Another thing that they help with, and Anne brought this out really well yesterday, was how it assists with the filler names because they had this clicker, it wasn't like this one. It's uh, one that makes noise. So every time you say um and um and ah and all those filler words, they click and you hear it around the room and you're like, dang it. You know, it's, it's because you're trying to become more fluid with your conversation. And we do not recognize how many times we say um and ha. Huh. And I bet when I watch this video again, I'm gonna be kicking myself too going, okay, 13, 14. It's, it takes work and it takes practice and an organization like, um, like, like Toastmasters is an environment where you can feel safe because everybody's there trying to do the same thing. You do have different levels for those of you that are very ambitious. They do have very, uh, very, very detailed levels that you can go through and, and gain different certifications. You can even, um, see what I mean? You can even participate and compete on a national and international level if you so desire. Some of you, you know, public speaking might be a thing for you and you find out that that's something that you actually love. Another thing to pay attention to is the written word. A lot of times when we get scholarship applications and um, essays for interviews or uh, different opportunities from, from young people for you to share what your stories have been, why you're the best candidate, those kind of things. Like we cannot determine one sentence from another because it is either a total run on sentence or it has just stopped mid sentence with punctuation. Grammarly is a tool that I've learned about recently that you can download onto your phone or laptop, what have you, it's an app um, that really, <laughs> Sorry, just made myself aware. Um, that really helps you 
to identify grammatical errors. It does, you know how when you're typing in Word, your words get highlighted and that sort of thing? Well, it does that for all of the things that you're writing. So it's on the web, it's in your email, all those kind of things. So it's a really useful tool to use. All right, so who wears what? For the ladies. Oh, you laughed already? Who wears what? I know why you laughed, okay. Uh, <laughs> organized and accessorized. I highly recommend that for you ladies, that you um, take a look at your, really the way that you're, you operate. Men too, but for the ladies, we're talking about stuff that can fit in your purse. So, gentlemen, hang on. For the things that can fit in your purse, I am often in environments where I'm in a meeting or something with other female colleagues and their purse is overrun with like receipts and notes and, st and it just looks, can I be straight up? Straight up tacky. They look disheveled, they look unorganized. Um, you're not quite sure what you're going to get from them. If you're asking them for a card, oh, hold on, let me see if I, and then they're putting stuff out on the table and you're like, okay, I didn't need to see all of that. Like, this is not a game at a baby shower where they're asking to dig to the bottom of your purse to see who got a safety pin. But that's what it looks like. So, I brought, I'm, I'm a pouch girl. I'm a big pouch girl. So, I highly recommend using things like this so that as your handbag is left open or on the ground or whatever, wherever environments we're in, we can still remain discreet. So I have, and I'm kind of anal about this, I'll admit that. So I do have my makeup bag. And in Denver, it is dry. Let me just say, put that out there. It's dry and I don't like ashy lips. So I have a lip bag, yes, a dedicated lip bag for all my lipsticks and chapsticks and whatnot. And that's something to pay attention to, believe it or not. Like when you're in somebody's face talking, and I'll get to the user friendliness of it all, but you wanna be mindful of, of your appearance and uh, just everything about you hygiene wise. Again, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, matching metals. Anyone know what I might mean by that? Not gold and silver. Not gold and, silver. and I know it's, it's like a super detail, but it's some of those kind of things that when you become more, uh, when you go higher and higher in the professional realm, people look at. So if you've got like silver rings and a gold watch and a rose gold dangling earring, it, it shows, it stands out. So little things so you know invest in a couple time pieces i would recommend like two to three uh definitely a silver definitely a gold and then maybe one to two black watches with either a silver trim or a gold trim okay spank it and i know that's why somebody laughed ladies a lot of us don't want to go to the gym but we insist on wearing clothing that is form-fitting. Be mindful of your undergarments. If you have not heard of Spanx, it is a revolutionary item, clothing item, that will bless your life. It will take, a, I sound like a commercial right now, I know, but it really does help to slim and allow your clothing to, to fit more smoothly, um, more, more um, complimentary. So just be mindful of those things until you can get to the gym for healthy living. <laughs> Structured handbag. Somewhere around here I have my structured handbag. And we're gonna keep it moving. Um, so, what a structured handbag looks like, structured. that is structured. It's petite but not structured. I mean, it's structured but not petite. So this is the, what I'm talking about when we're talking about a structured handbag. It's something that can stand up on its own. Whereas Chanel's handbag, Okay, well, whoever's handbag. <laughs> Brandy, thank you for your contribution. 
Not so much. When you're talking about having a clean and crisp look, you want to make sure that this is not what you're bringing along. <laughs> Just saying. Thank you to whoever's bag that was. I'm sure it fits your outfit quite nicely. Nails and her. Nails and her. Ladies, it is really important to make sure that you are well manicured. Now y'all looking at me. Uh, to be well manicured. Again, these are different ways in which we communicate our ability to attend to details. Um, hair. So, I appreciate all of us women who are getting back to our roots and exercising our freedom with our hair, our organic, God-given types of hair. Love it. Be mindful, though, about your, how do we say, edges. Real talk, let us be real. Because nobody's gonna tell you this stuff, right? <laughs> Take care of your, your, your braids, your extensions, however it might be, but just be mindful of the fact that they, they do age. And you wanna make sure as, as closely as possible to having a clean look is not to look like you're starting to grow dreads or have an afro under the braids. That's not a good look. It doesn't say professional at all. Pearl Power. Raquel is not in here with us. Um, some of you don't know this, but she had an opportunity with Toyota yesterday, and uh, they have asked for her resume. And so we found her a resource, and that's where she is right this moment, getting some help with her resume so she can submit it and have a completed product before she leaves this conference and that's what we're hoping to do with all of you but the reason i brought her name up is because she had on pearls today and when i asked her about something she said well i'm wearing this because you told me i'm not powerful unless i do have pearls on not that i didn't i told her that but pearls do send a message for sure it's a very classic look it's a very timeless look and it's the very one of the most surefire ways and very minor um, additions to an outfit that can help you just look that much more polished. You can have on a button down shirt and some jeans and having on some pearls will totally make a, a difference with that outfit. I don't know what that is, but it is. So just keep that in mind, one of those things to add. Don'ts. Try and stay away from open toe shoes when you're doing um, dress professional. Like when you're really, open toe shoes belong on the other side of the scale, closer to casual. So unless your, your environment allows for that, um, try, and, try and stay away from that. Loud makeup. I don't see anybody in here with loud makeup, so that's a plus. When you're going for an interview, when you've gotten the job, all of that, try and continue to you know, keep it toned down and just a fresh look. Not wearing too much jewelry is recommended. And then low and tight ain't right. Who knows what I mean about that? Talk to me. Well, I guess low, um, something that my mom always told me about bend over and you can see, like, my goodies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> tight, I mean, that's self-explanatory. Yeah. So low, low and tight ain't right, and she was right. No cleavage, no cleavage. Again, you all are at a place where you're building your reputation. You want them looking at you here to know what's in here. And if you're offering something else, they're gonna look at that and then think that's what you're about. And hopefully that's not what you're about. So, you know, don't put out what you're not selling, basically. Uh, tight gear with your skirt lengths, they should be at least towards the end of your middle finger is recommended. And then when you're sitting down, if, you, if your dress rides all the way up, make sure that as you're crossing your legs, you're crossing them at the ankle and not at the, the knee. Just, you know, little things so that you are, um, again, maintaining a, perf uh, a professional posture. The details. 
keeping simple with a dress, uh, separates, having a jacket on hand, keeping your jewelry simple, and finishing with a polished bag and shoes, just kind of to recap. For a gentleman, please match your belt and your shoes. That is a timeless recommendation no matter what you're doing and where you are. Even if it's ca you're out casual uh, with your friends and all of that and you, you're wearing some casual shoes, do your best to try and um, make sure your shoes and your belt match. Uh, crisp white shirts. When you're talking about getting dressed and dressed well, a crisp white shirt is always in order. You should also have as a staple, as staples, a couple other shirts. I highly recommend blue shirts, and you can have several different shades of blue. And this works for you too, ladies, because a lot of us, um, will you stand up for me? Are you wearing a polo or a dress shirt? Dress shirt, stand for me. So a lot of times us women will wear dress shirts very similar to what the guys have on, but I want to make sure that you understand that that, yeah, go ahead, thank you. <laughs> that, that too is appro very appropriate. Uh, for you men, you're gonna have different combos. And when I say combos, we're talking uh, shirt, tie, uh, pocket square, that sort of thing that will go on the inside of your suits, which you can change up quite a bit. Um, but you wanna be able to, some of your shirts, if, they're, if it's a light blue, it'll be better than a dark blue shade. And so depending on your combo, you wanna make sure you've got some options there. Uh, pick a suit according to your body type. So this gentleman who's standing up on the wall like twice. <laughs> Do you guys think Shaq would look good in that kind of suit? Why not? Too big. So be mindful of your, um, your frame and make sure that you are uh, dressing accordingly. Now when you all start balling out and you're making a lot of money and you don't have to buy off the rack type suits, by all means, take a look at that because then you can customize it because you got a lot of men who have a lot of girth and so their thighs are going to be larger and you know to have those tapered pants. There are a few designers that will do that and accommodate that. You've got like Armani who has that type of fit and you know a couple other designers. But for the most part, again, when you're buying off the rack, it, it just make sure you're looking at the fit and that it's complementary to you. Three different suit colors that I would highly recommend right off the bat for you men. Oh, got a question? Yeah. Yes. So rule of thumb when you're looking for fit, especially like let's say ankle. Mm-hmm. When you're talking about the fit in terms of the length, the pant length? Or width. So what is really hot right now is a tapered look. A, a slim fit and tapered look. Actually, I have a guest here with me today who's got on a slim foot suit. Sean, would you mind coming up and, and being our model? This is Mr. Sean McWilliams. Everybody clap your hands. And welcome him. So... This is a, uh, an example of a more slim fit suit. I, I misunderstood, I'm sorry, I thought he was wearing the one that, um, that tapers more because that, that one tends to uh, stop higher on the shoe. Um, but I, I, you bring a good, good uh, question about too. So for the, the foot of your suits, there are three different options when it comes to what they call a break. And that's where your pant leg ends and basically, it's when you, they taught me this at Nordstrom. Will you stand up straight for me? They used to kind of flick this right here. And if it didn't give very much, that was a full break. Turn around for me. You're such a great model. Um, and it normally means that the length of your pant comes all the way down to the top of your heel. Okay, then you also have what's called a medium break, where you flick it once and you see the front of the, the, the pant leg, it'll move, but it'll just kind of do like this uh, 45 degree angle. Um, that's a medium break and that's probably the most common break there is. Then you have a um, short break, which a lot of the tapered suits are now, where they stop like right on the top of the, the, the shoe Okay, um, and ladies, this applies for you too. You'll see a lot of our, thank you, Sean. You'll see a lot of our older gentlemen that are here at the conference with that same full leg and they tend to walk like this. 
you know, because they got to kick that pant leg out, right? So, you know, so, and you see a lot of the guys who are like younger and wearing, you know, the tapered leg, you know, they tend to, because there's nothing in their way. And they're, you know, more light footed, not in a bad way. But they just are, um, they don't have that same material to kick and carry. I think that contributed to some of the swag like Cyril got. <laughs> Uh, so that was a great question. So again, that the break on your pant leg is going to be a personal preference. Um, I see, I've been watching some of you gentlemen, and I do see that it seems like the short break is your preference. Again, because the trend of, of um, slim fit, skinny pants are in right now, and that's a very um, trendy thing for you all. So that can certainly translate into your suit. Just make sure that it's a, it's a good fit, and if you're going to do a slim leg, the rest of your suit is typically going to be, you know, fit. Uh, if you need to let it out because you've got more girth on top, consider that. It's going to be more expensive with tailoring. So a lot of times it's better to have your jacket um, fit best and then have your pants tailored. So just kind of uh, take note of that. Any other questions before I move on from there? So yes, that does say don't let your mom dress you and I'm sure most of you don't, uh, but I wanted to bring to our attention too, as you all are looking at those skinny pants, please get the fit right. Please, we, seriously, we should, and flat front is like what y'all wear now. We should not see your package. I'm gonna just put it out there. We shouldn't, because when you're wearing your jackets, it's going to, that section is framed, so you want to make sure that you're conscious of that sort of thing, all right? And I'm just, this is real talk. Like, if we don't tell you here as your mentors, because we love you and we want to see you present yourself well, who else is going to tell you? They'll talk about you. You might end up in a meme, but we want to make sure you don't. So, uh, tie and pocket square should not be the same. There was a time where you would match, it would, everything would be matchy-matchy. We're not there right now. They should be complementary. Sorry, I could have showed Sean off for that one too. He, so if you guys see him on the way out, he's a good example of that as well. It was a trend at one point. But at this point, it's, it's not. So what you're looking at is something that's going to be complementary. And for men, a lot of times in this environment, because you're dressed very corporate, your dark suits, et cetera, that's your way of expressing your personal, um, expressing yourself. Because it can be very limited depending on the environment that you're in. Like Cyril always has on a very conservative suit. But I'm sure his sock game is turned up. No, not Cyril. Okay, but you'll see with a lot of our other men, <laughs> that's where they can express themselves. Again, if they're in a high, high position, and Cyril is in a very high position, you know, the ability to express yourself and get funky with it, it's not really there for some people. And then you've got others. There's a gentleman, he's a board member by the name of Freddie Fuller. Freddie will roll up in here in a pink seersucker suit. And, and he's a Q too, so we really don't care. And so we've got this, uh, this bow tie on that's you know, super funky and, and all of that, but he's earned it at that level to be able to wear that and his environment allows for it. So it's a consideration of several things. Cyril has earned it too, but his environment might be different or the way he chooses to express himself or not express himself. Again, personal choice. But in terms of it being like super matchy-matchy, I mean, again, if, if that's what you wanna do, go right ahead. But just know that right now the, the, the trend is, is not that, something complimentary. Uh, <laughs> So I'm going to say, don't pay attention to Sean on this one, but uh, no loud color suits in the business environment. You want to stay away from a lot of the more unusual colors. There is a move right now to this blue. Dante, will you stand for me? This blue has like become the new black when it comes to suits. And I, I see between what you're wearing and, and what you're wearing. Will you stand for us also? Mm-hmm. 
Um, so, and you guys will see this a lot more often, but these kind of blues are very hot right now. Um, and again, if you're into being very fashionable, you're gonna keep up with this kind of stuff. Thank you, gentlemen. And, um, and make, uh, make note of those kind of things. But again, if you're Mr. Conservative, you've got the same suits, the same kind of look, and you play it up with your shirts and ties, handkerchief and socks. Uh, wallets and mobile phones, please make sure those are in your front, um, excuse me, they're not in your front uh, pant pocket. No bulges up front. You know, try and keep your, your phone and wallets, et cetera, on the inside of your suit jacket. Yeah. Is that your question? Okay. You guys learning anything? Yeah? Yes, Cyril. First of all, I'm very trendy, so I, I like that look, actually. Um, but brown, and thank you for bringing that up, brown lace-up shoes, aside from some black sh dress shoes, brown lace-up shoes are going to be the most commonly worn shoes for men that can go with a lot of different colors, your blues, your grays, um, your tans, that sort of thing. So if you're going to invest in a shoe after black, let it be a brown lace-up because that one will take you far from the boardroom to you know, wearing um, jeans with your sport coat and that sort of thing. So that's your, your second best choice. Yes, ma'am. What about socks? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, they, and that's intentional. Um, there's a huge trend right now for funky socks. The market is, has blown up over the last couple of years. Again, because there are so many environments where men have to be conservative, socks are the way that you can express yourself and have a little fun with your outfit. Because chances are people won't see your socks until you're sitting down. But if you're up and you're engaged and you're meeting and networking and all that, they're not going to see all that. And if you're sitting down at a desk or a table, they're not going to see all that. But the moment you sit down in a place where um, you're exposed, chances are you're more in a relaxed environment than not. So that's when it's okay for, your, you know, for that to, to be shown. Personally, I used to love funky socks back when I was in high school, and I do a lot of pantsuits similar to what you're wearing, so uh, Lydia. So um, I just that would used to be my thing. So I really appreciate seeing that come back around. Not that I'm dating myself to say that there's been a full cycle. So Brandy, don't laugh that hard. So the details again. These are areas. Any questions, by the way? No? So, gentlemen, some of these are the details um, and areas in which you can express yourself that we've been talking about. Um, some of them are conservative, some of them not so much. But again, according to your personality and your place of work, work it. There go your brown lace up shoes. Uh, some people like to wear suspenders. Work that thing if you do. Now, this applies to everybody. And what we almost talked about earlier when I mentioned, you know, making sure that you've got. Chapstick. Um, Altoids, I call this being user friendly. Make sure that before you engage with people, make sure that after you have a lunch and you're going to meet with some colleagues or interact with others, make sure that you're, you're user friendly. Check yourself. Ladies, I have uh, gum and candy in my purse. Our gun and men's because I'm, I'm always very cognizant. I meet with a lot of business people, um, business owners, uh, transportation officials, you name it. I'm always in somebody's face and I'm always very mindful of how I'm literally coming across. Uh, portfolio slash padfolio. Okay, so y'all, I thought my padfolio was all right and I was going to use this as an example. This I bought because uh, I wanted to show you guys. These kind of go. These can go up to like eighty dollars, a hundred dollars, what have you. This one I found on sale at Staples, and it was fourteen dollars on sale. And yes, I'm rocking it. <laughs> so, and I bring this out because this is what I want you all to consider getting. 
It uh, kind of brings your, your professional attire. Uh, it's one of those things that help to give you a, a clean image. Um, and when you're going to your meetings, you're not carrying just an open pad and paper as if you're going to class. Like you guys are on another level now. So you gotta look the part. But I gotta tell you, somebody who done um, one-upped me like three times over. Uh, Lydia, can you stand and show your portfolio? Yeah, go ahead. yeah. yeah. Come on, I wanna appreciate your, the classic look. So when we all start balling, we can get on her level. But I did wanna just point out that she had the mindset and the wherewithal to have one, and I see that some of you do, thank you. Um, and I do see that some of you do, so that's something you certainly wanna invest in. Yes? So portfolio and no notebooks? It has a notebook in it. Okay. Yeah, it has a notebook in it. Let me, the one that I got this time around can hold, it also has a, a calculator, it can hold my business cards and um, a couple other things, including flash drives, et cetera. Okay? So, that's a good look. Uh, writing utensils. So the higher you go up, I want you guys to pay attention to this too. When you start meeting with folks in your company, especially like C-level executives, pay attention to their writing utensils. Like the higher they go up, the better they get. That blue big stuff, that's out of here. So again, uh, and I didn't bring this to floss or nothing like that, but those pens that I have on the, um, in the picture there are called Mont Blanc. Somebody want to Google a Mont Blanc pen? Tell me how much they cost. How much? That's on the low end. So they are very nice. So I managed to acquire one, and, um, and I use this when I go into like, high-level meetings. There was a uh, large project, there's a large project going on in, in Denver right now and had the opportunity to meet with uh, one of the executive directors and he broke out his Mont Blanc and I broke out mine. And he was like, oh, nice pen. I said, yeah, I like yours too. Yeah, my wife works there and blah, 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 blah. There was like this immediate understanding like, okay, you got class or okay, you get it or you know what, we can engage. The smallest thing, it was a pen. <laughs> it's a writing utensil, but again, one of those little things that can help separate you and, and help your, your brand as you're building it as a professional. Oh, no perfume or, or loud cologne. Please make sure that you are well-groomed. Take a moment to look at yourself before you go into a meeting. If you need to get your lipstick right, if you need to you know, wipe off some crumbs, or you know, if you're coming from outside, you know, go get a wet paper towel and dab your forehead. Get that shine off. And yeah, I'm just being real. Um, Ship-shaped shoes. How many people appreciate a nice car? Come on, raise your hand high. Ain't nothing wrong with liking a nice car. Uh, what do you guys think rims look like on a nice car? Bad rims. What do bad rims look like on a nice car? Huh? You don't put rims or put bad rims? Really? What are you driving on? You, you, you drive stock rims on a nice car? Okay. Anybody else have a different opinion? Are the stock rims already nice? So that's why you're not replacing them? Okay, how about you? All black rims? All black rims? Why? A sleek look, okay. Anybody else? Y'all wear, y'all use the hubcaps? Or you use, come on, talk to me. What are you working with? You just try. <laughs> He's like, I'm just happy to be in the building. So, uh, whether you're switching out, because it depends on the kind of car, because if you're talking like Alfa Romero and all those kind of things, I probably wouldn't downgrade. But um, if we're talking about, say, I don't know, a, a, an Audi or a, an SUV or something, and you want to, you know, kick it up a notch, you put on some nice rims onto that truck. Um, similarly, your shoes either help your outfit or they hurt your outfit. Do not walk in anywhere with any turned up raggedy shoes. Men, take a moment to, I know polishing is like out of season. You, you don't even know what I'm talking about. You was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> like, 
some people don't know about that. And so they will go and get a new pair of shoes before they polish because they don't know that they can do that. But be mindful of your shoes because your shoes communicate a lot. They do. Um, they do. I did, I'm sorry, because I'm known as like the shoe person, if you all couldn't tell. Uh, you know, matter of fact, let me just walk around real quick and so everybody can see, you know. I just, that, that's just my thing. I'm known for unusual shoes, but I, you know. But they don't have to be unusual. They just need to be in good shape and they need to be clean and not turned up. Please don't have your, the flap hanging on the bottom to where you're tripping over carpet. Not a good look. If it's time to get some new shoes, invest in some nice black leather shoes for sure. Anything outside of that, your grays, your tans and browns and all of that, that's fine too. At a minimum, the black ones for sure, because those show up your creases, those show up a lot of different things. Have a confident posture. I was watching you guys when we were uh, introducing you to the board. Some of you were kind of confident and others of you, like I saw some people who were like, yeah, so um, my name is, and you know, and I just, you know, and this is my school and this is, have a confident posture. You did that, what's your name? With the brown jacket. Yeah, so I noticed that when Winston spoke, he, like the room, they almost sat up to hear him because he was like, my name is Winston. I'm from Zimb Zimbabwe. Because <laughs> I know we get offended when we call out the wrong thing. I'm from Zimbabwe. Yes, I'm the deal. You want to get to know me. If any of you have a job out there that's a really great job, I'll take it because this is the path that I'm on. He didn't say those things, but that's what we heard by the way he conveyed his message. So posture can say a lot. And sometimes it says just the opposite of your words. So be careful with your posture. Poised, polished, and professional equals promoted. That's kind of the whole point of what we're talking about right now. Being poised, being polished, being professional, and, and the way that your attire contributes to all of that, that can help lead to, um, to greater things for you. Lasting impression, words, wear, and work. I'm, I'm leaving you all with three quotes that I think are pretty good for what we're dealing with today in, in the context of today's meeting. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pictures of silver. How many of you have had somebody come to you and say an encouraging word or give you a compliment on like your worst day ever? Has that happened to you? Yeah? Or have you gone to somebody and said something and they were like, man, I really needed that. I needed to hear that. That happened to me actually just today. Use your words, again, part of your brand, your brand to build others. Be cognizant of what you're saying. And that includes building yourself. Take into consideration how important the things that are coming from you are. Your words are a big one. Your wares. This quote is, a person's attire is a reflection of their inward self. A lot can be told by what somebody's wearing. We can tell when they're insecure because they're trying to get attention. We can tell when they're confident. We can tell when they are uh, tired because they look like they don't have an iron in their whole house. What you put on is, is your, your statement to the world. That's how you're showing up to the world, to opportunities, to a potential boss, to a potential mate. What you wear is what you're saying that day. So say something good and try and say it every day. Work. A lot of people are afraid of this word. Don't let anyone look down on you 
because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. As you all leave from this conference, well, we gotta get it started first, right? But as you go through this conference, and as you leave from here, I want all of you to remember that you're an example. A lot of you are the first time attendees to college in your families. Some of you are big brothers or big sisters to someone. Some of you, your parents are trying to live vicariously through you. You're an example to someone. Be mindful of that and take that seriously. The things you say, the way you conduct yourself, your executive presentation. In love, I, I, I wanted to make sure I added this quote because we do have a social responsibility. And as you all become more and, and, and stronger in your professional careers, I want you to remember to pay it forward or to give back, right? That's being done in this program today. We are loving on y'all. This is love. You're gonna to continue to feel it as you're, as you're here as well. Uh, in faith, a lot of people who are here will tell you that they could not have made it to the levels that they are on without their faith. Things are gonna get hard, times are gonna get hard, and sometimes the way we look is just gonna be one of those superficial, it don't even matter day kind of things. And it gets to be like that for real. You're gonna need something to draw on to really encourage you to stay in the race, to fight the fight, and to continue one more day in an area that's going to be challenging, that's going to be a struggle, where you're going to be discouraged, all of that. It'll happen. But make sure you've got an anchor that's going to help take you through. And lastly, in purity. It was said yesterday, being mindful of you know, the things we post and, and how we represent ourselves, but just want to remind you all that many times modesty is the best policy. And whatever that looks like for, for you males or whatever it looks like for you females, it will take you a long way. We don't have to show and display, and, and, and I know I'm not necessarily talking to that particular group, but if you all know friends and have know people and have friends who may exhibit this kind of behavior or wear this kind of stuff, encourage them. That's part of you expressing love. That's part of you being an example. Thank you all for allowing me the time to share with you.